It was going to be especially cold today, the glimmer of the screen had told him through the hot fog of his pre-dawn coffee. So he put on his long blue button coat and his big black boots, which now crunched to the laces in the morning bright snow. Under his blue officer's cap, the wool mitts, muffs and muffler made by his missus, froze to his hairy head, wetted by his steaming breath. He knew every street in the city. And he had been here before, but this part of town had been knocked partway down and built up again so many times that the department's maps of the Ventus Kinas brought to mind the cross-sections of human circulatory organs he had studied in school. Like a magnet kicking into place, his eyes found a wooden sign engraved with words placed high up on the lintel above a wooden door, blue paint curled by the cold. It said, H blank Arbarium. E N E blank Y M A S blank G E ampersand compu blank blank R E P blank I R. He remembered falling into this same circumstance the last time he had been here. Coming again was like a double image reaching focus. Just through that little archway there on the left side of the path stood the place he needed to go. Shifting the warm metal badge undercoat with his cold fingertips just above his heart, Detective Bernard Vasquez mounted the creaking stairs of the courtyard and passed beyond the wood beams holding up the snowy shingled roof and its dripping beard of icicles. The shelter of the roofed upper floor offered a blessed respite from the wind. Vasquez took a moment to warm his bare fingertips with a couple quick huffs of hot breath and listened to the wind's hollow roar as it rushed in from the open sky through every available channel, whipping ice crystals across the cobbles in little whirls. There was a faint buzz beneath the hurried wind, something metallic that he couldn't quite place, like the waning ring of a tuning fork. It seemed to have its source just above the door in front of him. The door bore the number 13, just above the spy hole in little peeling single-digit stickers. He knocked. The door swung open under his knuckles and the buzzing sound increased. Suspicion softly pulled his hand to his pistol and his shoulder to the door. He opened his eyes wide to catch anything in the periphery as he peered into the gloom. Unseen lights cast in blue-white flickers, rivers of candy wrappers, mounds of discarded clothes, a stained mattress in the corner, monumental stacks of old pizza boxes, and odd bits of machinery in various states of deconstruction with their parts about them like crowds of idolaters. Is anybody there? Vasquez said. Just us, said a voice from deeper in. That you, uncle? He pushed the door the rest of the way open and forced his hand from his holster. As he walked in, cautious to avoid the little mechanical flocks, a chill shot up his straight officer's spine. That buzzing sound was much louder now, coming from the other room. It was the hum of computers hard at work. Where are you? Who's us? called the detective. In the other room. I, I'm just finishing up. The apartment in Ventus Kinas hadn't been anything like this last time, when he had helped his nephew move in from the orphanage he went to after the fire. Nor had the lad been so free with his words. Perhaps he was healing, but the room did not support that idea. The detritus about the place seemed to lay where it had fallen when discarded, and the cacophony of rancid smells emanating from some of the deeper piles suggested that he was deep in the grasp of a detached depression. The only light came from a barely glimpsed array of screens blaring muted colors in the other room. 